Good afternoon, everyone, and greetings from uh, still cold but sunshiny Ohio. Uh, I hope all is well and you all are enjoying your time uh, in the course. I know the last module uh, with, um, with some of the material can be a little dry, but this, this week's module, Module 7, is actually one of my favorite modules in the book and one of my favorite topics to discuss uh, in hospitality and, and resort management, uh, and that is marketing. Uh, a majority of my students that have gone into uh, hotel and resort operations have, of course, gone into the operations side, whether that be uh, housekeeping, front desk, food and beverage, assistant general manager, things like that. But a significant amount of students have gone into marketing, and it's uh, an exciting place to be. It can be a challenging place as well. Um, with this author and this subject matter, uh, I do want to say that Chapter 7 is probably the best blend of real-world examples mixed with the uh, hospitality scientific community uh, as far as research and things like that. But there are some excellent examples on some of the things that the authors are speaking of, some really good academic studies that are mentioned that are peer-reviewed. You will see one of the items right off the bat that's mentioned in this chapter is Pine and Gilmore's Experience Economy, which we covered earlier in the semester. But this is one of the major building blocks of marketing, uh, presenting to your guests the experience of staying at your resort or at your destination. So we will go more in that. But I just want everybody to know that this chapter is especially uh, very relevant. Uh, there will be a midterm exam question uh, specifically on chapter seven. So if you want to highlight that chapter or put a sticky note, if you have a physical copy of the book or actually save the uh, page numbers, if you have an electronic form of the book, uh, not only will this be on the written exam, but this will also be a major part of your final project as well. So please, please, please uh, give chapter seven the uh, attention it deserves and maybe uh, highlight or read it a couple of times if you feel the need to. So couple of things to dive in with chapter seven. The, uh, the first thing we want to talk about is place marketing. And this is one of those definitions that where the, uh, uh, the highlight says it all place marketing, you are marketing that place, that destination, whether it's a beach, a mountain, a town, uh, theme parks, skiing, uh, fishing, relaxation, national parks, just really, really marketing that place where we want to bring people to not only visit your resort, but that place, that experience. Uh, moving on to the cluster marketing theory or th uh, cluster theory marketing. This is where a lot of local businesses and a destination may band together to uh, not only market themselves, but also market the destination. You'll see this sometimes with Las Vegas. You'll see this a lot of times with the cruise ship industry. Uh, you don't really see this in the uh, in the theme parks in Florida, California, anywhere. They they are their own separate entities, but you will see around the country. Um, you know, visit Nashville, Michigan, Texas does this as well. Uh, visit California. A lot of places will say, "Hey, let's join forces to bring in as many people as we can as kind of a cluster," and you know, let the customer pick where they want to stay, what they want to do. But the more people that we can bring in, we'll all benefit. Uh, the good of the many outweighs, uh, outweighs the good of the few. Uh, rising tide lifts all kind of those principles in the uh, cluster theory of marketing to not only bring guests to one hotel or one resort, but to bring them to the destination and there's enough for everybody to go around. Very interesting theory. Uh, a lot of people are for it. Some people are against it. Both have very, very good arguments for and against, but it is a very interesting marketing theory in the world of hospitality and tourism. Uh, changing product emphasis. Uh, this very interesting concept you can think of back in the uh, early 20th century, travel was thought to be kind of stuffy for the rich. You're, uh, you know, you dress up in your Sunday best, your concierge, everybody has heard the stories about you would wear your, uh, your, your best attire to fly in a plane. Uh, the concierge would take your bags up to your room, but we see even well before the switch over to the 21st century that changing products, changing emphasis. Now for, uh, most travelers, you get your key to your phone for your room, uh, mobile access, mobile check-in, not even going to the front desk, completely bypassing the front desk, having your stay paid for already through an app with these various resorts. So we're seeing a lot of uh, products changing in the room. 
A lot of hotels and resorts aren't even offering uh, really cable packages or pay-per-view anymore, which was, even when I was in the hotel industry, still a significant uh, revenue generator to uh, to have movies and pay-per-views in your room. But now it's all streaming services. You can connect your Netflix, your Hulu, your Amazon Prime. So we are seeing a lot of uh, market changes with products in the industry. And marketing those changes is a big aspect of whether you're marketing these resorts to uh, baby boomers, Gen X, uh, even some of the, the greatest generation, millennials, uh, Gen Z. We want to make sure that you're highlighting those changing products and the changing emphasis on those products to meet the customer demand. Um, marketing changing seasons. This is a relatively uh, impactful topic. As you look all around the country, you can see more and more destinations and resorts uh, changing with the seasons. Of course, if you're a beach uh, resort and you know it's out of beach season or if you're a winter or summer resort, you want to try to hang on as, as long as possible. A good example of this up here in Northeast Ohio or North Central Ohio, they have Cedar Point, which is America's roller coast. I uh, I am partial to Disney, as you all know, being a Florida guy, but there's nothing wrong with Cedar Point. It's just not my cup of tea. If you've ever been there, if you enjoy it, hats off to you. Just not my thing. But, but you see them extending more uh, into the fall season, uh, having more Halloween-style events, themed events, things like that, just to try to stretch that travel season on a little more. They offer discounts. Uh, for the hotels at that time to offer cheaper rooms to get people to stay over, maybe, maybe make it a two-day event in the park, have a couple of drinks, stay overnight. So they're trying to capture a longer season uh, of that resort. There's an excellent uh, example in the book about uh, Blackpool, England and their famous Illuminations light show and things like that, trying to extend uh, the season uh, well past the traditional season. In the this week's uh, videos posted in the assignments, I did post a really good example of where I'm from in Orlando. The Gaylord Palms is traditionally considered a convention resort. That's where they really uh, made a huge impact in the Central Florida area. Recently, in the last couple of years, they have really built this business around their uh, Christmas and holidays uh, spectacle, they call it. Just a lot of shows, displays, things like that. And there's a really cool video that I posted in this week's assignments. Uh, it was a well-known secret, or maybe not a well-known secret, around the central Florida area that if you wanted to find a cheap hotel room around the holidays that was just off Disney property, Gaylord Palms was a great place to look for an extreme value. But they have done a great job, unfortunately, for us that were looking for cheap hotel rooms of building that uh, Christmas and holiday business. And now uh, it is a major revenue stream for them. So uh, check out the video later on in the uh, lecture. If you watch that first, uh, I, that's why I put the Gaylord Palms video in there just to show a great example example of marketing uh, the changing seasons. And one of the last topics in the uh, in the book before we uh, add a couple of topics in is branding. Uh, again, in the uh, in the lecture videos, you will see uh, one of everybody's favorite resort and uh, tourism destinations of Las Vegas, who have gone through uh, an extensive rebranding over the last twenty years. Uh, in the late 1990s and early 2000s, Vegas tried to rebrand themselves from the gambling capital of the world to a more family friendly. Las Vegas, uh, it did not go well. Uh, a lot of people like to harp on the fact that that ad campaign did not go well, but Las Vegas was becoming a mature destination. And we've read early in earlier chapters what can happen if you don't rebrand if you're a maturing destination. So they tried, they did fail, but it's also a very interesting um, topic of discussion to where they tried to go with more family friendly. As to now, they are back to almost 100% the what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas convention, uh, marketing to more of an adult crowd, and uh, now a massive, massive sports gambling and gaming tourism destination too. So you will see more uh, topics of discussion on that. But branding, marketing your brand, uh, getting your message out there and controlling that brand message uh, is critical for uh, hotels, resorts at these destinations. Last topic I want to cover is the uh, evolution of social media in marketing. Uh, as we all know, the internet and, and social media have been a game changer on the marketing front for so many years, but we are seeing a very, very interesting evolution even still in social media marketing. 
Uh, right now, in a lot of circles, Facebook and Instagram are considered uh, kind of the the, the past, and uh, TikTok now is really, really dominating with some of the social media marketing. Just had a colleague reach out to me that is doing a study. Uh, he gave me five desti destinations to look up on TikTok for destination and resort management, and I, I guess he's looking at something with the algorithm or something like that, but he gave me these five destinations and asked me to send him the first 10 videos that showed up when I when I searched these topics, uh, Disney was on there, Las Vegas was on there, California, uh, you know, Canada, and all inclusive. So, my point is, we are starting to see these different segments, even with TikTok and other social media, of uh, influencers or companies getting their message out there and marketing these destinations to the masses. Uh, of course, that's a different kind of budget. Uh, a different kind of, of way of putting the content out there, but also you're seeing that's a lot, maybe not the easiest message to control. People can interpret it things. We all know online it's, it's you know, an open book. So, uh, you know, controlling that message may be a little bit more difficult than your traditional TV or radio advertising or things like that. Think of, uh, you know, Atlantis and, and things like that. When we see on these TV commercials, you can pretty much control the message. Whereas uh, with online and TikTok, you might not be able to control that message, even though your intent was to put that out there. So some very interesting discussion. I look forward to seeing everybody's uh, discussions in the groups. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, the course is going along great, but if you ever have any uh, anything you need or any feedback or any clarification on anything, please, please feel free to reach out. Hope you all are doing well, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.